Welcome back to another episode of Halo Talk. This is going to be a very big episode, and there's a lot to talk about, so let's just jump right into it. First of all, as you guys know, probably know I've been gone for a month. There's a few reasons for me, like, taking a quick break. Um, I've been on trips, and I've been going places this summer. It's kind of been, like, half me forgetting to make podcasts. And I've also kind of chose to take a few weeks off because of something that happened to the Angels on July 1st. So basically, I'm not basically. So let's just, before this podcast starts, or at the beginning of this podcast, what we need to talk about is the news on July 1st. Tyler Skaggs was found dead in the team hotel in Texas on Monday afternoon on July 1st. The immediate news, the immediate immediate shock of this news was just crazy. Tyler Skaggs was on the Angels for one of the longest times out of the roster. He was one of the longest tenured players on the team. Um, Not only that, he had one of the greatest personalities on the team, and he was also becoming a really good pitcher So, man, I mean, I remember when I got the news, it was just, I was actually, so we went to Texas, me and my brothers, to see the Angels play there on that whole road trip. Um, I was actually walking to the stadium when I heard the news, and at first I didn't really believe it. I thought it was just some weird joke, but then realized all the articles and realized how real it was. And pretty much immediately, I just turned all of my sadness towards his family, friends, and also his teammates. I mean, teammates are like, I feel so bad for them. They're basically family. They're all family for more than half the year from February to October. Uh, for the Angel, at least the fast, fast, past few years. Not till October, October till September. Um, they spend every single day with each other for more than half of the year, like I just said. Um, I mean, yeah, they're basically family. And I feel really horrible for all of them. Like Trout said, he said he spends more time with his teammates than his family, which is just crazy. And yeah, it just feels horrible for his family and friends. Just so shocking. And yeah, the game that day was canceled. So I think they're planning on making it up uh, this next past week or this upcoming week. Um, This kind of makes the season for the Angels more than baseball. This is definitely what we saw on July 12th when the Angels threw a no-hitter at Angel Stadium. And this wasn't a regular no-hitter at all. This was the first Angels home game since Tyler Skaggs' death. The game they were honoring him, and everyone on the Angels were wearing Tyler Skaggs' uniform. Also, Tyler Skaggs' mother threw out the first pitch, and she threw a strike. This was one of the many crazy coincidences that kind of happened this game. Like, things that just lined up to Tyler Skaggs. Uh, First of all, the Angels scored seven runs in the first inning in 13 in total, winning 13-0. And 7-13, July 13th, is Tyler Skaggs' birthday. This was also the 11th no-hitter in Angels history. And Tyler Skaggs wore jersey number 11 in high school. Um, This is the craziest coincidence to me. The last no-hitter thrown in California, was the day he was born. It's weird, because it's almost like his life began with a no-hitter and ended with one, as weird as it sounds. He was watching over, I mean, it just seemed like he was watching over the Angels all game, as they had a perfect game winning 13-0. And this is also, there's something else crazy that happened, which I see similar to what happened to Jose Fernandez and what D Gordon did. 
when the Marlins played their first home game since Jose Fernandez's death, and they were honoring him wearing his uniform, D. Gordon hits a home run on his first at bat. A no doubter too for D. Gordon, which is just kind of crazy. And also, what I saw um, when I searched up, it was his only home run all year, and it was on his first at on the first at bat of the game too. In the first Angels home game after Tyler Skaggs' death, Mike Trout hits a bomb on the first pitch he sees. He hits it 454 feet. Not only is that a no-doubter, it's 45, the first two numbers, and the actually the last two numbers going backwards is both 45, which is Tyler Skaggs' number, which is just weird if you think about this. It's kind of specific, but I mean, all these things just happening, it's just really, really weird. Um, and it's, pr- I mean, it's just kind of more than a coincidence to me. Um, even if I like don't even believe anything. And I was lucky enough to be there. That was just the greatest moment in baseball I've ever seen and probably ever will see. Um, that was definitely a moment that was more than baseball. And... Anyway, let's get out of this. Let's just get more into baseball because that kind of just wasn't baseball. That was just something else that we saw on the field. I mean, a no-hitter, just crazy. Anyway, let's just get into... First of all, let's just kind of start off with the last month because what I want to do is kind of go through every week of Angels baseball every week of the podcast, but obviously I was gone for a month. <clears throat> so maybe we just need like, I'll just tell you guys a quick update of this past month, that what happened to Angels baseball. So the first month, the first series of the month, the Angels beat the Rangers two out of three games, but lost to the Astros two out of three games on that Texas road trip. So they went three and three. And then there's the all-star break. Uh, Trout and Tommy Lestel were all-stars. Uh, Tommy Lestel actually got injured in Texas, which is just really sad. I really feel bad for him, too, because he's having a career season, and he'll be back in a few months. But anyway, let's move on to ask, after the all-star break. The Angels sweep the Mariners and then beat the Astros two out of four games and then play the Mariners again in Seattle. And they just beat them two out of three games. So this is a great start to the second half. Going 7-10 and ten so far in the second half. Um, they definitely need to keep this momentum. Um, and today they stand five and a half games back in the playoffs. They definitely need to keep the momentum to try to get a chance in the playoffs. So we're going to get more into that later in the podcast. Um, so this past month. I don't have enough time to go through all these games individually because I'll just be sitting here for hours and hours talking about them. I'm probably going to do that starting the next podcast. I'm going to be kind of reviewing every game of the week because I'm going to do it every week. But I've been gone for months, so I can't really explain the whole month. Um, I'm kind of going to sort of start over in this podcast. And what I thought of doing is for this podcast, I want to evaluate kind of the Angels whole season and kind of how the individual players on the team have done um and just look at the Angels chances at the playoffs um because that's kind of the most important thing and comparing I want to do this I want to look at their chances at the playoffs by comparing the Angels this year to the Angels last year which I don't think anyone's really done that much at least is compare teams from this year to last year and see how better they are or how worse. Um, so basically the big question of this podcast will be, are the Angels better this year than last year? I'm just going to say this right now. It's not even a question. They're a lot better this year. But we're going to get into it, obviously. I should do like a question of the day or like question of the podcast, like every podcast, like a big question. That would be interesting. I'm just getting ideas. I'm going to get better and better as podcasts go on. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm going to give my best attempt to explain 
how better the Angels are this year with the power of stats. Cool, right? Anyway, I'm basically going to be judging players' contributions to the team and showing different positions and what's upgrades from them last year and what's downgrades. Um, so, I want to start with the Angels lineup. I'm going to go to the lineup, then the starting pitching, then the bullpen. My camera just turned off. I have no idea why. I was, I was actually trying to film a little YouTube video here where I was doing the podcast. Um, something's wrong with one of my GoPros. Um, anyway, let's get on to it. The main lineup of last year was um, something like Albert Pujols at first, Ian Kinsler at second, Simmons at shortstop, Cozart at third, Maldonado at catcher, and then Trout, Calhoun, and Upton in outfield. This year, it's Albert Pujols at first base, Renjifo at second, Simmons at short, Fletcher at third, Lucroy at catcher for the most part, and again, Trout, Calhoun, and Upton in the outfield. Um, and also to add Tommy LaStella, he, he's been starting all year and he will start when he's back. Um, but this year the Angels definitely have the edge. Let's get into the positions right now. Kind of starting in middle infield, David Fletcher and Tommy LaStella are kind of the new guys this year. Um, last year, Zach Cozart and, um, damn it, Ian Kinsler. Sorry, uh, they put up, uh, well, okay. All right, Zach Cozart, let's just start with him. He's put up, last year, one of the worst years I've kind of ever seen. His on-base percentage was way less than 300, OPS less than 700, and he hit in the low 200s. I mean, compared to his last season before, in that season, 2018, was just really bad, and I don't really have any hope for him. This year at third base, it's been David Fletcher. That has been a huge upgrade. David Fletcher has an on-base percentage over 350, an OPS of about 770 at the moment. Um, he's really young, and this is his first full season pretty much. Kind of his second season, but his first season he only played like 50 games. I think it was more of a, like, a later call-up. Uh, not quite a September call-up, but I think in, like, July or August. Um, he was, believe it or not, he kind of had a close to an all-star type of first half of the season. Not quite, but I definitely think in the future he's going to have at least a few all-stars. The future is really bright for him. The future is also bright for Luis Renjifo at second base. His numbers this year offensively are pretty similar to Ian Kinsler's last year at second base. But kind of the difference is Ian Kinsler was starting at second last year and Luis Renjifo is off the bench. The only reason Renjifo is starting at second is because um, um, Tommy Estella is injured right now. Uh, right now, Renjifo, uh, he got called up this year. He's already not doing too bad. He's been doing well, seven over 700 OPS and 330 on base percentage, which is pretty good. He's only 22. He's a rookie. Um, he's going to get better. For now, um, once Tom Estella comes back, Renjifo will probably be a utility player off the bench. Bench, But he definitely has a great future for himself. He's definitely going to be one of the better starters on the team in the future. Um, but we're talking about out of this season right now. So this season, he's having a pretty decent season. He's actually, I remember a stat. I forgot it. Too lazy to search it. He's hit so many um, line drives and hard hits, but he's sort of an unlucky type of player this season. So his stats should be basically a little higher. Um, uh, But yeah, once Tommy LaStella comes back, he should be starting at second base. Um, Then yeah, let's talk about Tommy LaStella and how he did the first half of the season. He had, he hit over 300, he's gone on base over... Damn it, I'm, I'm messing up this podcast. I haven't done a podcast for a month, okay? He's hit an over 350 on base percentage and about 850 OPS. He also hit 16 home runs, which is really impressive. 
he hasn't hit that many home runs his whole career.